Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat, daily topic. Today is episode number 494. The countdown continues. Um, yeah, next week it'll be number 500, I believe. So we'll see what that's going to be. Some celebration, I guess. Anyway, 500. Not f yeah, so I said. So staying on track, today's topic um, is love does not live in the future, which sounds kind of obvious but I'm gonna break some myths up and hopefully give you some insights and some, some direction even. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day, or 494 of them. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women, so I'll say this again. I help strong, successful women find and create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart because they started as a need for a masculine-hearted voice to speak to you ladies, particularly, to offer you support, compassion, and clarity from a male vo point of view, unlike some of the other male voices chattering out there. Anyway, that's a distraction from where I'm going. <laughs> so to stay on topic. So today's episode is number 494. It is Facebook Live initially, although I do put it onto YouTube and onto my podcast after that. I'll give those links at the end, and I'll put them in the comments as well. Actually, no, I won't put in the comments. That'll be something else. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the topic today is love does not live in the future. Sounds kind of obvious, yet so many of us, and I have done it myself, so I'm going to put myself in this, so many of us have a um, preponderance, perhaps, or a certainly a predilection to put love out in the future. Like when I have this relationship, I'll feel more loving. That's the simplest way I can put it, which is the insanity of the way we think love works. There is only one place love can be, and I'll get to that in a second, because a lot of us are living also, let me give the other side of the point, is that some of us also have love in the past, where we had that great love that we lost many, many years ago, and we'll never find love like that again. In fact, there are probably 17 songs out there like that in, in the pop charts from many moons ago. I think there's one, if I remember correctly, Lionel Richie did one about the, you never find a love like, 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 like this love again, something like that. Bullshit! <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it that way. See, this, the thing is that we have this idea that love somehow lives out there in the past or out there in the future, and it doesn't live in either place. It lives right now. And this is actually the way we have things reversed. Um, I've talked about this quite a lot before, and I've, I've worked with my clients on this, is that we are... I want to say programmed, but certainly taught to believe that when we have certain things, we'll have a certain experience. So in life, for example, when we have the right job or the right amount of money in a bank account, we'll feel successful. When we have um, gone to the gym enough times and exercise, we'll feel fit. And this programming, this wiring of putting the result out in the future away from us is somehow designed to help us have an incentive to go after that goal. The problem is it's not true. Your success is not based upon your bank account or your job success. It's based upon who you are. So it's almost the idea that it's reversed. And this is this is really, the, in a way, that it is in a way. It's kind of a bit about the law of attraction, how we start the law of attraction from getting to the place where we have the feeling tone first before we manifest the result. So when it comes to career success, it's having the feeling tone of what you want to create, what you want to have, how you want to experience. That's going to be in the future, but bring it into the present moment now and experience it. And by doing so, what happens is you will start to have this feeling, yes, feeling, that will start to become magnetic to attract to you what you want. And this is the thing that the law of attraction teaches, that the world does not, does not um, present the same way. The world is designed to or the world, not sure it's designed, but certainly it's presented in a way where when you, on, only, only when you get to this certain point can you have what they say you can have. But based on the law of attraction, when you feel the way you want to feel when you're there, then there will happen more quickly, if that makes any sense. I'll say that another way. We as conscious spiritual human beings have the ability to focus on an energetic. We, can, we are one of the few, maybe even the only um, animal on the planet, if you use that term, that can think independent of circumstance. Most other 
animals, creatures on the planet, think only in the place they're in. They can't think beyond it. So we as human beings have a gift, which oftentimes is a curse, that we can see further down the road. So we can actually mock up, create a future vision of where we want to go, even though we're in the present moment. So like when you're, when you're looking at a vacation you want to go on, you can see, I'm going to get to the point in a minute, by the way, you can see, <laughs> you can see how it be to be in that wonderful cruise ship or that lovely vacation spot in, in the Bahamas before you're even there, because that's the power of our imagination. This principle applies in every area of your life, not just your vacations. So you can, in fact, set up a model for that for your business career. We can already hold that space of success inside. You can actually mock up how it would feel like. And imagine the scenario, too, of where you're receiving the awards or having the accolades or having the amazing clients or whatever it is. You can mock that energy up inside yourself and create a, basically what I would say is a resonant frequency, maybe is the way of putting it. But putting in a place, an energetic, where you'll feel what it feels like then. Because what happens is it becomes a magnet to move you towards where you want to go. So what's that going to do with love? Same thing applies. In relationships, we have this training, again, all the love songs and the movies out there that teach us this stuff, that love is somehow out there, which means it's beyond our control. Love isn't in here. The rules are that love is out there. So when we get to that person or that relationship or that place with that person in that relationship, then we're for love. Well, the misconception is that we think it's the other person that's making it happen or the situation that's making it happen. Now, yes, there is this experience we go through when we meet somebody that we tend to, um, I hate using the word falling in love, but it's the expression that we, we experience more love as we get to know that person. When we get more intimate, when the walls come down, we become more loving. In the traditional terms, we fall in love more deeply than ever before. If that's the term you, I don't agree with that term because we don't fall in love with anything. It, I'll get to that in a minute too. So we have this sense that when we get further down the relationship, we suddenly feel more loving. So we have this assumption that love shows up then, not here. And that's not true. The paradigm of love and this challenge we face is that love isn't out there. Yes, there's love in other people, but the love that we think we're experiencing doesn't come from them. It comes from us. Yes, yeah, he's going to go, say what? This is the thing I want to make sure you get this clear and this understanding because it really is a game changer for a lot of people. We are the sources of our own love. We are the expressions of our own love. And we are the holders, the gatekeepers, the owners of the love that's within, within us. When someone loves us, what it tends to do when we feel a relationship that's within that's reciprocal is we tend to magnify our own love so we feel more loved. But the love's coming out, not going in. Yes, we can feel supported by the other person, but it's kind of like what happens is the love they give to us matches the love inside of us. They don't fill us up with their love. It may feel like that, but what they're doing in a way is touching off or, or inspiring or awakening their own love inside ourselves. Love doesn't transmit that way. It's an amazing healing and powerful agent, but it's done by inviting out the love within somebody else. This is a paradigm shift for a lot of people I know. And it comes through relationships. If you're single, it's learning how to embody and embrace the love that's within you now when you're single so that when you get into a relationship it's actually easier to be ready for that relationship and also get easier to attract that relationship because as I said the law of attraction if you believe in this which it, which I would say you have to because if you don't believe in it or do believe in it it's still working <laughs> so it really is so the love that you are looking to have in a relationship start practicing it experiencing expressing it now in your life when you're single own up the loving that you are. Allow it to express through you, to expand through you, to fill up your whole beingness, to fill up the cells and pores of your body, even. When you feel that loving inside yourself, when you start to really um, embrace and embody that love inside of you, you start to become brighter, so to speak. I mean, there are words that use like vibrational frequency and the light you shine, all these different terms. But I would say what it is, it's because you become more magnetic. And, and you're, mag you're magnetizing on a frequency of love. And in particular, this is one of the strengths that women have generally more than men. We can all do it, but women are more practiced in this naturally in the feminine. We men have to actually focus our energy into the feminine to do that ourselves. We can do it the same way. Same way. But by expressing the love inside ourselves and bringing that forward and really amplifying it, and especially when you have that love that is um, permeating or 
um, inflating a vision that you have. I'm just looking for words to feel to make you explain this. If so, let me go way around. When you have a vision of what you want in a relationship, a clear picture, an image, it's still very flat, very simple. When you infuse it, that's a good word, with love, then that becomes much more three-dimensional, more, more whole, more expressive. And what happens is your vision then has a, has a density to it, a depth to it. And the more depth and density it has, the more magnetic it becomes because it has more solidity. And so when you start creating a vision of relationship, it isn't about just a picture. Because literally that's a two-dimensional thing on a wall. By amplifying it with experiential feelings and love, you give it depth and reality. And then the love that you're filling it up with becomes the magnet that pulls into you what you want in a relationship. This is different technology than what most people have been taught, I know. And it's something I've been teaching for a while in one of my programs. And what I get clearly for all of us is that when you learn how to bring the experience of what you want into the present moment, then what happens down the road can happen more easily because you're more clearly attracted to it. It's a subtle priest, but the truth is when you do have that place inside where the love inside of you is strong enough, then that which you want will come towards you more easily. Now, <laughs> you still also need to have a level of um, selectivity because being more attractive and magnetic to love because you're filling yourself with love can attract lots of things to you, some which you may not want. So I do recommend that when you do this, that you really get clear that your loving is a... Um, is a vehicle that has discernment around it. So you look clearly and you choose clearly what you want in a relationship, what you want in love. Because when you do have that bright light shining forward, it's like a, it can be more of a floodlight than a spotlight. I talked about that last week. I remember I did a couple, week or two ago. I talked about floodlight versus spotlight. The thing is you want to do is you want to focus your loving specific, specifically to the quality of relationship and relationship partner you really want. Because if you're doing it in a floodlight format, you're going to attract a lot of moths. Literally, energetic, well, energetically, excuse me. People who will come to you go, wow, she's attractive, or he's attractive, and they want to get more of that. You don't really want to do that if you're looking for a monogamous relationship. If you just want to sleep around, fine. But if you want a monogamous relationship, you want to really focus and laser focus your loving energy towards the vision that you really believe you want, you can have, and you can own, and that will help bring in what you want. I just saved you a bunch of money by not paying for one of my courses, because that will teach you that. <laughs> but it's a real powerful talk. So when you recognize that love is in the present, to get back to the title, love isn't in the future. Your relationship may be in the future, but to prepare for it, you do it for the present now. So you learn how to love yourself and own your space and fill up your own beingness with love first, and then focus it where you want to go. You're doing a lot of the legwork, as it were, the steps to create and attract what you want in a relationship. This is, um, this is how love really works. A lot of people don't know this, so this is a secret that you now know. <laughs> but I want to make sure you get, get some understanding, because if you start playing with this in your life, particularly if you do it in other areas too, because if you're already in a relationship, maybe you want to play in this area of how to mock up and emulate your next vacation, or emulate and express the energy for your next job move. If you do that, it becomes much more magnetic. Here's the thing, in the job search, for example, if you're someone who's looking for work right now, there's often an energy that drives you that is a place of neediness. Like, I really need that job, or I want to get the job because I want to get paid to make the money, all that sort of stuff. If you change the energetic of that by sitting in for a moment before you go out on your job searches, embracing and embodying the feeling of what it would be like to have that job effortlessly, easily in your life. First of all, we take the pressure off. Secondly, you stress a lot less. And thirdly, you become magnetic again in the area you're looking at, which is career. And you can attract to yourself that job you want. Whether it's relationship, job, or other areas, the same rules apply. You start inside, in the present moment, and you fill up with the energy what it would feel like. If it's loving relationship, or if it's career success, whatever it is, it starts inside. And if you get that one figured out, your life will transform. And that, I think, is that. This was meant to be a... Um, well, no, it wasn't meant to be anything. This, <laughs> this is a powerful teaching that you can use in any area of your life, as I said. So if you're working on career or love or any other area, you can play with this first. And the thing about it is, it doesn't require anybody else. It just requires you to focus within you. So your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to think about this in an area of your life where something you don't have yet, you'd like to have, maybe it's a new house, a new home. It could be something else entirely healthy. It could be anything. 
focus the energy in the present moment how it feel to already have that experience and let that percolate right now I'm doing that around getting a new car so I'm definitely sitting with that feeling of how it'd be to have that car before I even go out looking because then it's going to make it easier when I go looking because the thing is I won't be as um, <laughs> I won't be as needy of the first car I see going oh I want that one it's like no I'll be more, att more attached because I'm learning how to be embodying myself so I'm playing with this as well so I invite you to look at how you want to have more of what you want in your life the right way by starting inside in the present moment all right with that um quick reminders the self-love piece i've talked about before and about learning how to build that love tool that love skills i have two things i want to let you know about quickly before i let you know where you find the broadcast um my self-love practice that i um, should say the guided meditation I, uh, for the self-love guided meditation is something I recommend everybody gets because if you're not loving yourself enough yet, you're not practiced enough, this will help you with that. It's a very low investment, but it gives you two guided meditation, two guided meditations and a written guide um, with my voice. You get my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash self love, or one word. And the second piece, by the way, my website and all my social media is my name, Barry Selby, so you can find me there. The second piece I want to mention is I'm it's starting up this month my new, my new um, self love centric course. It's called Love 18, and it's going to be 18 different elements around love that will change the way you love in life, love yourself, and love anybody else. Um, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be deep. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a four-month course. So it's going to be quite a journey through the holidays intentionally. So I recommend you check that out. I've got a new a Facebook Live I did yesterday I put up there for you to look at because it talks about that piece. And if you go to barryselby.com forward slash love18, the number is 18, check that out and see if it lines up for you. I'll put the, I'll put the links in the comments. Um, that's my latest offerings. This is my Facebook Live, as I mentioned, and this Facebook Live goes out onto my YouTube channel, also on my podcast. So on Facebook, I put the archive onto my business page, which is barryselby.author. You find all my broadcasts there. I also put them onto my YouTube channel, where the broadcasts also live. So you've got a message from the masculine playlist under my channel on my username, which is Barry Selby, and you can peruse them all down there. It's actually the easy way to search, because YouTube's got a better search um, function, in case you're looking there. And I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and thirdly, on my podcast, which is on iTunes, you can search for Messages from the Masculine on iTunes, and you can subscribe there and download those broadcasts there. That's a slower loading, uh, a slower building um, library. I've got way more on my YouTube and my Facebook pages than I do on my podcast. So there's where you find me. Um, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below. I'll respond after I sign off. And I do invite you to take this to heart. You can create the reality you want starting inside now. That, in fact, is a good um, that's a good title for a new topic. But it will certainly help you if you think about that. So with that, I wish you well. Have a pleasant evening. Take care of yourselves. I'm back in tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. I believe that our book is launching tomorrow. But I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. I'll be watching on social media. You'll see posts about that. And also, this is tomorrow's my double broadcast. I do my usual one at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so you can join me then. And then at 6 p.m. Pacific time, I'll be doing a double broadcast with my friend uh, Gina. We have now got a double, a, a Tuesday night date to do a double broadcast. We do it live together, indeed. So with that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves and uh, enjoy. Bye. <laughs>